Well, we are already live on YouTube and I am switching my camera to share the page with the problem. So it's lecture 17. The man got that it is. Review for test three, question one, use the method of undetermined coefficients to solve the problems. And the first problem is second derivative minus twice the first derivative plus y equals x e to the two x. And now I'm giving you two minutes to think of your own and then we move on. You want to start, Messi? You done? I'm close, but I'm not done yet. No? I thought you would be like on the second problem already. So please, let's us do the first part of it quickly and then... Can I start with John? First part of the problem. Did you hear me, John? Mm -hmm. 
Ana. Can any of you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Well, I have called John, I have called Anna, and I see no reaction. I don't know whether that means you don't get it or what. Can we go through the first step of the solution? Macy. The first step is the Euler equation. So you find big Y of X, so it'd be so um, lambda squared minus two lambda plus one. Okay, lambda squared minus two lambda plus one equals zero. And what's the solution to this? So lambda one and lambda two are equal to one. All right, so all the two solutions are equal to one. So what's the so solution of the homogeneous problem? It's C1 e to the X plus C2 X e to the X. Great. Now, based on this solution of the homogeneous problem, you go to the step two. And in step two, you want to find YP using the method of undetermined coefficients. What would be the formula? You start by checking whether alpha is a root of the Euler equation or not. Alpha is two in this case. Is two any of these two numbers? No. No, so it's not an exception. Therefore, what should be the formula for YP? Isn't it AX plus B times E to the two X? Excellent. That's what you do, you have. And then you need to take the derivatives now derivatives y prime and y double prime you need to get them so go ahead and then tell me what you get ไปไปทําเพื่อนเด้อไปกินยาสุดตรงเนาะเดี๋ยวนะฮะเนี่ยจุ๊งจุ๊งก็ก็ <coughs> 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 All right. <coughs> what is the first derivative? It'd be a times e to the two x plus two e to the two x times a x plus b. which is A plus 2B plus 2AX all times E to the 2X. This is exactly what you've said, right? Yes. All right, now second derivative, who wants to try? Want to try, Ethan? I got 4AE to the 2X plus 4E to the 2X times the quantity AX plus B. Give a second. You, I didn't get that. The first is 4A plus? Uh, it would be 4A plus 4AX. 4AX. Plus 4B. Plus 4B, yes. All of that times E to the 2X. And for those who don't get that, this is a product rule. It's a product of two functions. So the derivative is taking by first, taking derivative of the first, multiply by the second, then you get the derivative of the second function that you multiply by the first. And because the derivative of the second and the first are going to all have e to 2x, I put it as a common factor. 
<coughs> so the derivative of this one is going to be 2a and the 2a plus this 2 here when you take the derivative times a that gives you the 4a i have here you got also 4ax because 2 comes down times 2a that's 4ax and the 2 comes down times 2b that's 4b that's why this is correct thank you ethan so the two derivatives are correct and this is all we need now what we need to do is to go through the equation and track the coefficients of the basic functions. Please tell me, what are the basic functions in this case? X e to the 2x and e to the 2x. X e to the 2x and e to the 2x, that's it. So we are going to go along the equation and report only the coefficients of x e to the 2x, then the coefficients of e to the 2x. And the equation is second derivative. So we take the second derivative and we take the coefficient of x e to the 2x. And in, in this case, it's 4a minus twice. And then we go to the derivative and we take the coefficients of x e to the 2x. What is it? 2a what it's 2a 2a excellent that's it and then you go plus and then you go to the original function and you look for the coefficient of x e to the 2x that is a a equal the right hand side of the equation what's the coefficient of x e to the 2x one that's wonderful that's it so you got your first equation you got 4a minus 4a that's going to be zero plus a so easily you get a equal one and that's always going to be the case the first equation always gives you the value of a now you report the second equation in which you have only the coefficients of e to the 2x can somebody else help with tracking the coefficients of e to the 2x For y double prime, it's 4a plus 4b. 4a plus 4b, that's correct. Minus twice, and then? a plus 2b. a plus 2b, correct. And then plus the original function. b. b, that's it. And the right-hand side, what's the coefficient of e to 2x? Zero. Zero because there is no e to two x by itself. It's x always times e to two x. So here you got zero, and now this one you're gonna solve to get the value of b because you already know a. So a is one. That's gonna be four plus four b minus four b. They cancel, and so and then you get minus two a. So that's minus two plus b equals zero. So you got b equals negative two, right? Everybody agrees with that? Yes. And that's it. Takes us at least 10 minutes. Now you report yp using the found numbers. A is one, so that is x. B is minus two, so that's minus two times e to two x. Now tell me, how do I end the problem now? Y of X is gonna be equal to big Y of X plus YP of X. So you so have your- uh, Yep, the solution is gonna be the solution of the homogeneous problem plus a particular solution that we just found. That's C1 e to, two, uh, e to the X plus C2 X e to the X plus x minus 2 e to the 2x that's it which means we are professionals already right and that's why i'm going to give you the next one i'm not going to say anything and you are going to give me the right answer so now look at the exercise here i'm giving you five minutes to complete the exercise you got second derivative minus twice the derivative equals 
x <clears throat> that's the problem on the left and you got a sample on the right so you can look at that and follow the steps
think our five minutes are over. Anybody? James, you want to try? Let uh, me start yeah. the page. So that was second derivative minus twice the derivative equals x, right? Yes, sir. I got uh, lambda squared minus two lambda equals zero. Okay. So let me first get that equation to say we are solving the homogeneous problem. So we got lambda squared minus two lambda equals zero. And the solutions are? I got lambda one equals zero and lambda two equals two. Excellent. And so the solution of the homogeneous problem is? Uh, C1 e to the zero x plus c2 e to the two x which is just c1 plus c2 e to the two x all right so this is the solution of the homogeneous problem now you want to have the second step which is write down a formula for yp solution of the special solution um i got a x a x it can't just be a x what is the polynomial that, that, that you're right writing huh you have a polynomial of degree one so what do you do when you have a polynomial of degree one anybody can jump in to help AX plus B. AX plus B. So polynomial of degree one, you write polynomial of degree one. Now there is something else here. <coughs> Wouldn't it all be multiplied by X since? That's what I'm, I'm, that's what I'm saying. So there's something else here. The fact that zero is a solution of the homogeneous problem because here in this problem, alpha equals zero. Because e to the zero is one, that's what is standing right here. Alpha is zero, and alpha is the solution of the homogeneous problem. Because that is the case, you're going to have to multiply yp by x. That's why here we have x times ax plus b. And that is going to be ax squared plus bx. So this is what you're looking for as yp. Are we okay? Now, let me give you some minutes, then take the derivatives and then track the coefficients. Let me see what you get. So next step is derivatives. What's yp prime? It would be 2ax plus b. I'd love to have somebody other than me. Do ax plus b. Plus b. Second derivative. 2A. It's, it's not to say I don't love hearing your voice, Messi. I just want to hear somebody else on this one. Right. So we got the derivatives, and now we, we want to track the coefficients. What are the basic functions that we want to track here? X and 1. Um, check carefully. Can you start with X squared? x squared you start by x squared even if you know that it's going to end up giving you zero equals zero perhaps it will let you know that you are doing the right thing okay so that's it and this is really crazy i'm sitting outside it's windy and it is what time is it even let me tell you guys it is 7 30 p.m it's windy night time the lights are off. I put on a generator. It's generating energy, and I'm using it to have it all in the class. It's wonderful. So let's track the coefficients of x squared. Um, that's going to be zero. Zero. Minus two times zero. And zero. And right hand side. Zero. Zero. So you see clearly it's zero equals zero, and that tells you your derivatives are okay. And now we can move on to the next things. So what about x? Zero. 
zero minus twice. Uh, times two a. Two a equals right hand side. One. One. Right away you get a equal negative one fourth. Life is good. Then you track the constants. Second derivative. Two a. Two a. That's it. Minus twice and the original function. B. B. No, the first derivative, not the original function, right? The derivative uh, equals right hand side zero. Zero. And then you go there, you get B equals A. And A is negative one fourth. So everything is negative one fourth. You get YP of X equals negative one fourth X squared minus one fourth X. And again, the last step is what we do y of x equals may see this time um it would be the solution to the homogeneous equation plus y p of x would so be c1 plus c2 e to the 2x minus one fourth x squared minus one fourth x excellent and please never forget this part because that's what often people forget and you lose points for no reason that's it so we are great as far as these equations are considered with undetermined coefficients. Uh, do you have any questions before we move to the next topic? Basically, we got three topics on this test. It's undetermined coefficients, variation of parameters, and cauchy euler equations. Is Charlie here? Yes, sir. Yeah, I just want to hear your voice, friend. Thanks. Is there any question? All right, so if there is no question, then we can move now to the other topic, which is variation of parameters. Question two. variation of parameters. All right, so let's do this. This is second derivative plus four times the function equals, let's say here, what? Cosine of x imagine this i'm going to solve this and then i'll give a second example that you'll solve and again it's variation of parameters first step as in the previous one it's going to be again the homogeneous problem that you solve for which you have the euler equation plus four equals zero and this time that gives you lambda one two equals plus minus two i <coughs> and those are complex conjugate numbers which means that the solution of the homogeneous problem involves cosine and sine alpha being zero either alpha x is just one so it's c1 cosine of 2x plus c2 sine of 2x so this is our solution of the homogeneous problem. And then we go to the second step. And I do want you to write all of this down when you're answering the questions on the test. Tell me that you are variating the, the parameters here. So y of x, the, the solution of the non-homogeneous problem, uses this answer in which you're varying the coefficient c1 and c2. That's why the method is called variation of parameters. <clears throat> 
So you got y of x equals c1 of x cosine of 2x plus c2 of x sine of 2x. And then you report the system of equations that is solved that is used to solve this, which are c1 prime of x times y1, which in this case is cosine 2x plus c2 prime of x times sine of 2x equals 0. And the second equation is c1 prime of x. Derivative of cosine is going to be negative sine 2x times 2. So negative 2 sine 2x plus c2 of, uh, prime of x times the derivative of sine, which is 2 cosine of 2x equals the right hand side of the equation which is cosine x that's it and now to answer this you do w the here which is given as cosine 2x coefficients of the first row sine 2x and then negative sine 2x and 2 cosine of 2x obtained by multiplying the cross diagonals and subtracting you get 2 cosine squared 2x plus 2 sine squared 2x and this sum is equal to 2 so the Vronskian in this case is equal to 2 and in the lecture we said c1 prime of x equals negative f times y2 over w f is cosine x so that's negative cosine x times y2 y2 in this system is sine 2x divided by w and w is 2 that's it and c2 prime of x equals f y1 over w and that is cosine x cosine of 2x over 2 and now we have one step left which is integrate each of these derivatives to get the two coefficients c1 of x and c2 of x so c1 of x equals negative one half integral of cosine x sine 2x dx how do we integrate this please Anybody to help me with here? How do I integrate this thing? Would you start by plugging in two sine x cosine x for sine of two x? Um, or is that not the right the right first step? Yeah, it's not legit in this case. This is a product of a cosine and a sine. So you have two ways of answering this. Either you integrate by parts somehow until you head back into the original functions that you had in there, or you use the trigonometric formulas to transform this thing into a sum instead of a product. Am I making sense? And because it's product sine of co and cosine, you think of a sine. You know here, sine of a plus b is equal to sine a cosine b plus sine b cosine a. At the same time, sine of a minus b is sine a cosine b minus sine b cosine a and if you use these two 
you just add them, you're going to realize that sine of a plus b plus sine of a minus b equals 2 sine a cosine b. So anytime I have sine a cosine b, I know it is one half sine a cosine b is one half of sine of a plus b plus sine of a minus b. So right here, I'm going to put this as negative one half integral of b in this case, in our problem, b is x. And a, which is with sine, is 2x. So a plus b is 3x. So that's sine 3x plus an a minus b. And in this case, again, remember, a is 2x. A is 2x and b is x. So that is sine of 2x minus x sine of x dx. So this is what that integral turns into using this formula here. And you can now easily compute the integral. You got negative uh, 1, 6 cosine 3x plus 1 half cosine x plus little c1. So this is what you get as answer. And please try to do the same thing I just did here for the second one, c2 of x equals one half integral cosine x, cosine two x dx. Knowing that you need a different formula for the product of cosines. For the product of cosines, you're gonna have cosine and cosine here. Cosine of a plus b. <clears throat> is cosine a cosine b then what comes minus sine a and sine b that's how you get the cosine of a sum and if i go cosine of a minus b that's going to be cosine a cosine b plus sine a sine b and you can see again if you add these two things you get cosine a plus b plus cosine of a minus b equals 2 cosine a cosine b. So, in general, cosine of a cosine of b is nothing but one half of cosine a plus b. Plus cosine of a minus b this one thing here I think I left out the one half I gave you here so it's gonna be one fourth here actually which makes this one one fourth and this one one twelve because cosine x sine 2x it's one half of this and you had another one half outside so it's one fourth and this one is going to please use this other formula that I wrote here to figure out here what the integral is equal to. Hey, Dr. Longlo. Yes, sir. Um, for the, the integral, where it's uh, like sine 3x plus sine x, wouldn't yeah. that be um, uh, negative 3 over 4 cosine 3x? You have a negative here, so it took care of that. All right, but like, I thought when you integrated a um oh, one, never mind. I'm, I'm thinking one, third, one third times one fourth is one twelve. Okay, I, I was thinking of the derivative. Yeah, I understood. It's the opposite operation. It's divided by, right? So when you take the integral, it's going to be over three, not times three. Are we good? Hello? Yes, sir. Okay. And so please uh, use this 
formula I just gave here to change this and compute the integral. You have my answer? I'm going back to the Hello. Anyone to tell me what that substitution gives here? I got 112 sine 3x plus 1 fourth sine x plus c2. How is that going to be signed with this formula? Oh, I was talking about the answer I got. I'm oh, I want you to give me step by step. You know, I always ask the steps. So I got, um, I got, I got cosine. I got one-fourth integral cosine 3x plus cosine x dx. Plus cosine x dx. That's right. And now you tell me what that final answer was. So that's going to be one-twelfth, you said? One-twelfth sine 3x plus one-fourth sine x plus c2. That's correct. Excellent. And now what you do is report y d of x as C1 times Y1 plus C2 times Y2. So that is 1 12th cosine 3X plus 1 4th cosine X plus C1 times cosine 2X plus 1 12th sine 3X plus 1 4th sine X plus C2 times sine 2x. That's it. That's the solution of the particular, that's a particular solution of the non-homogeneous problem. And from there, you can write the last step, little y of x equals capital Y of x plus yp of x. Questions? Any questions? I have a question real quick. What? I have a question real quick. Yep, go ahead. Um, do we have to write the capital Y of X again, even though if we put this C1 into the yp of x, it already like c1 cosine two of x and c2 sine two of x are already in the problem. Yeah, if yeah, if if you do that, if you do what I wrote here, it's enough because it's already here. The c1 cosine two x plus c2 sine two x here, it's no more yp. It's just y of x that you obtain. You're right here. Okay, thank you. 
Mm -hmm. But if you don't put, I wrote that because most of you on the on the homework didn't do that. They didn't put the constant here. So if you don't put the constants, you need to do and come and write this. But when you have the constants, it's enough. It's not even Y D you are finding here. It's just Y. <clears throat> Other questions? All right, if there is no other question, I'm going to move on to the topic with the Cauchy Euler equation, which is the third topic that we have to review. All right. So question three. So you probably have about six, seven questions, two on each of the topics, and then a question on which you'll just be asked to write a formula for YP and not have to not have to look for the coefficients, for the method of undetermined coefficients, just write the formula for a couple of problems. Homogeneous. Let's say we got two x squared y double prime minus x y prime plus five y equal zero. How do we solve this? How do we do this? You can talk with me right away before you, you try to solve the equations. What's the first step? Don't do like the um, M. Uh, yeah. That's, so what is it? Uh, two m squared. Yep. Plus, plus. Uh, negative one. Yep. Minus two. M. That's correct. That's correct. Plus five. Five equals zero. That's where you start. So when we get into this thing, you even start writing down th that down before you even think what's going to happen next. So that's the equation, and you solve it: two m squared minus three m plus five equals zero. What are the solutions? You can use the quadratic formula. What's the solution of this equation? And is it um, three fourths plus or minus? What's that? Three fourths plus or minus 
Um, I square root of 31. I didn't get that. Three fourths plus or minus square root of 31. 31? Over? Over four. Four. I, I don't know. I didn't check. Just check the formula. So that would be nine minus 20. Five times four. That is 20 times two, 40. So that's negative 31. So you're right. And then I, right? So that's it. And because of that, we are going to have cosines and sines. So the answer is what? What's the answer? Y of X equal? Hello? Wanna I got C1X X to the three fourths. I'm sorry, yep. I keep answering. Um, cosine square root of 31 over 4 times natural log of x plus C2x to the 3 fourths times sine square root of 31 over 4 times the natural log of x. That's it. All right. Now, when you have a problem with the right-hand side, if you have this, uh, sorry, equals x ln of x, And then what I suggested was you do change of variable. You take x equals e to the t or t equals natural log of x. And now this equation turns into d2y over dt squared plus b minus a, that is one minus one, one from here minus this one, times dy over dt, minus four y equals x, it's e to the t, natural log of s is t, so that's t, e to the t. So this gives you d2y over dt squared, minus four y equals t, e to the t. And when you transform the problem like this, you can see it's e easily solved using the method of undetermined coefficients. So in the next step, what you will do will be solving d2y over dt squared minus 4y equals 0, for which you have lambda squared minus 4 equals 0, lambda 1 equals 2, lambda 2 equals minus 2, so capital Y of T is C1 e to the 2T or C2 e to the minus 2T, which in other words is C1 X squared plus C2 X to the minus 2. Because e to the T is X. And then you do now the YP thing for the method of undetermined coefficients. T, that is AT plus B times E to the T. And then we look at one. One is not a solution of the Euler equation, so we don't need to multiply by T. That's it. We take derivatives and we track the coefficients to find those constants. We can go here, follow here, take the derivatives. So YP prime is equal to a plus b plus a t 
derivative and the second derivative is 2a plus b plus a t e to the t so these are the derivatives and you go ahead and you track the coefficients of t e to the t and then you track the coefficients of e to the t t e to the t you go to the second derivative that is a minus four you go to the original function that is a equals right hand side of the equation t e to the t coefficient one so you get a equals negative one third then you track the coefficients of e to the t you got two a plus b minus four times in the original function you got where is it b this is for b equals the right hand side coefficient of e to the t is zero so here you got b is equal to two thirds of a so b is minus two nine and now that leads you to y p of t equals a negative one third t plus b minus two nines times e to the t which in terms of x is negative one third natural log of x minus two nines times e to the t which is x so this is the yp this is where is that first part uh, this is the solution of the homogeneous problem and you add the two to get y of x equals capital y of x plus little yp of x which is c1 x squared plus c2 x to minus 2 plus negative one third natural log of x minus two nines times x that's it any questions on this hello Are we all good? Yes. Yes, sir. Yes. All right. If you guys are all good, I think I'm I'm going to stop here because everything else is going to be repeating these things, and I'm terribly low on energy. My computer is going to shut down because the battery is dead. So we probably meet next time, and I pray God that the battery doesn't go down on the test. All right, so if you have a question, you can remain with five minutes and talk to me. Otherwise, we meet next time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Stop, That's not Thursday, it's correct? It's going to be easy. Just repeat the things that we did. Thank you. Thank you, sir.